A floresta, os rios, é a nossa casa. Ela é, para mim, no meu ponto de vista, o coração, não do Brasil, mas sim do planeta em geral. O Uruê Uauau é como se fosse uma barreira. Tudo desmatado. O sonho brasileiro de quem está vivendo aqui é ter seu pedacinho de terra para poder trabalhar, né? tirar do seu sustento. Eu mesmo falo, eu nunca vi nada de índio. Só fala também. Quero acabar com o povo indígena, acabar com os isolados. A gente não vai permitir que aconteça, não. Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Indigenous Wisdom for the Earth series. My name is Tara. I'm the Network Relations Manager for Tree Sisters. I'm also the host of this series. And today we're going to be speaking to a producer from a documentary film called The Territory. Her name is Sigrid Dakar, and she has produced more than 30 documentary films, including an Oscar nominated documentary called The Cave, for which she won an Emmy for Exceptional Merit Documentary Filmmaking, as well as a Peabody Award. She's additionally won numerous awards, including Outstanding Achievement in Production at Cinema Eye. And her notable titles, works that she's done include The Kingmaker, Scandinavian Star, and Aqua Lala. As you may have seen in the trailer, this film will offer the perspective of both the indigenous community and the farmers and settlers who are taking their protected territories from them. It's very interesting and eye-opening, uh, it's very informative. I believe this film has a lot of potential and I highly recommend if you are somewhere where this film is premiering in the next few weeks, go see it. It will first open up in the United States and then it will open up in the United Kingdom as well as Europe. And it will be playing in Brazil as well. So let's really hold the intention that this film brings about some positive change for a more peaceful way to deal with the complexities that exist. I do want to mention they included press notes and these press notes are very extensive. They're quite informative. I think it will help give you more information about the situation and understanding the different pieces to the story. I will include them on our websites during the pandemic, the production crew, the filmmakers would not go into the indigenous communities area because they did not want to risk potentially bringing the virus there. So the cameras were handed off to the indigenous community and they took on the task of filming their lives and the challenges that they came across in protecting their territory. So we are in a way for the first time seeing the story from the indigenous person's lens, which is so admirable. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing this film. So I'd like to introduce you to one of the producers of the film called The Territory. And her name is Sigrid Dakar. And if you could, please go ahead and share with our network who you are, what your role is on this film, and a little bit about what the film is. So my name is Sigrid and I'm a Danish producer and I've been producing documentary films for the past 22 years. Um, I always love to produce films where they are character driven and by very strong filmmakers who has a very strong visual style and a very high craft um, delivery, you could call it, or a craft level they want to reach. And when I met Alex Pritz and he showed me material from uh, the Amazon and from this community in Rondonia, I was so captivated by the characters. I was so captivated about how he was telling the story. 
And the story is about the Uruguay community. Um, they're indigenous and they live in the Rondonia in the Amazon. Uh, and they're every day being threatened to either be killed or settlers that are interfering and coming in on their territory and grabbing their territory to do agricultural um, land on on their on their for in their forest. And so every day is a threat that they that they are up against. Um, and what was so special about Alex's way to do this film was that it was really in a very strong collaboration with the indigenous community. So already from the beginning, he was including them a lot in what visions did he have for the film and how did he see the film evolving and also how did they want to participate and what stories did they feel were stories that were important for them to tell. And very quickly, they actually said to Alex, well, you can't really make a film like this where you're just focusing on us because we are really not the problem. The problem is the settlers and the land grabbers. It's really not us. So if you should make a good film, you should go talk to them. And he was like, oh, you know, not knowing quite, you know, quite how he was going to do this because, you know, they seem a bit brutal, these land grabbers and, you know, uh, farmers. And so they said, well, you know, they're going to love you. You are American. They love Americans. They're not going to love us. They want to kill us and they we can't communicate with them. So it's much better you go and you start uh, filming them uh, because we're also quite curious how they look at this. So it really pushed Alex in the direction of uh, showing both sides of the conflict and uh, also trying to maneuver both communities, which is really hard, you know, because you build up a lot of trust with your characters. And he had to do like a really, you know, thorough line between the two parts of the conflict, even to an extent where he had uh, different crew members on the on the two teams, simply to be really trust trusting his his relationship with the characters and working in a very um beautiful and and trusted way with them and that really was a big uh, part of his work to really make a difference between the the two parts uh, I was very impressed with that when I saw it I was enormously impressed with how much he was also concerned about the filmmaking like how beautifully shot it was how much he was working on the two soundscapes of the indigenous community had one type of sound the settlers, the farmers, the land grabbers, they have another type of sound, much more metallic, much more with like chainsaws and, uh, you know, cars and trucks. And so it was really, you know, there was so much level of filmmaking in it where I thought, OK, we can really make a different film from the Amazon and we can really show this conflict in a much more in-depth way and in a much more in emotional, engaging way, because you actually start beginning to understand both sides of the conflict. It's not as simple as we think. Just stop cutting down the trees and stop doing agricultural land in the Amazon. It's not that simple. And so I think Alex was really embarking on a much more deep story than I had imagined we could do. So I that's why I got engaged in it. And I just hope, you know, the audience will really see you know the, the craftsmanship that has gone into creating a film like this for the big screen with beautiful sound and in, in a fantastic score uh, so they will really get a very good cinematic experience of going to watch it in the cinema yes even in the trailer itself you can see the quality of the footage and i was also reading in the press notes that he did the different types of sound so that the audience when they're viewing it will know exactly who they're about to be hearing from, which I found very fascinating. That's such a, a genius approach. To and know. even with the music, we have a very talented composer. Her name is Katja Mihalova, and she is originally from Kyrgyzstan, lives in US. And she actually went to the Amazon, to, to Rondonia, to get sounds from every character and sounds from the rainforest and sounds from the settlers to sort of build into the music. So you can even hear in the score that there's two different types of music, whether you are with 
the indigenous community or you are with the settlers. And it kind of creates like an extra drama between the two parts, just because the sound and the score actually collides and builds up the tension between the two groups, but yeah. also really makes you emotionally feel the two sides. So I think, yes, a lot of work went into the sound and the music on this film. Yes, I, I think um, one of the things that I find very powerful is that you're hearing from both sides. Because a lot of times we tend to go, oh, these are the good guys, these are the bad guys. But everybody has a story and you know they believe what they're doing is helping their country and it's like oh you know and i really really hope this kind of opens up the door for conversations with each other maybe or even you know on a larger scale to try to see each other's perspective and respect that and find some middle ground um i, because... I think we even go further than that i think that's yeah. completely correct but i think you know, COVID hit and Alex couldn't go. And Bitete, our very young leader of the indigenous community, he was quite frank with that. He was like, no, Alex, nobody can come and visit us. Yeah. Not even you, but you can hand over the cameras to us and then we'll start filming and show you, you know, the conflict from within side now that we're having the pandemic. And I think in that sense, the film also offers a totally new perspective because they are actually telling the story from themselves through the from the like the middle of the film. The the cameras are, are is on their hands, and they are really good filmmakers, and they are really strong about their narrative and their story and the history and the culture and the deep deep insight and knowledge they have about living in the forest and you know brought to them by their elders and the whole tradition that lies within that. And I think this is the first time in a film that you're actually invited in where they take over the camera and they're like, now we're telling our story and we're pretty good at it. So lean back and we'll, we'll, we'll show you. And I think that's, that's, a, a, um, you know, a perspective I haven't seen before in any films from you know indigenous community or about indigenous communities so Alex collaborated with the community to an extent where they kind of took over the film and I think it's just a really powerful element in the film when they take over yes it just seems so obvious in a way why not they should be the ones with the camera they are the ones who are living it it is their story why hasn't this been done before I don't know, well, but I'm I know a lot of them. filmmakers that have very big egos and they would um. not allow <laughs> to the characters. So I, I say it's to Alex Pritzett's credit that mm -hmm. he has the strength and power to let go and see, okay, so where is this moving us? And it never mm -hmm. ever became a sacrifice of like the, the visual style or the craftsmanship or you know, he was editing the film with a big editing team and also a Brazilian editor. And so it, it wasn't like he felt that was to any threat at all. On the contrary, it actually really made them uh, be responsible as well uh, to tell this story and be part of it. So I think that's a, that's really a very special documentary film. You know, I haven't seen this type of work before. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I also wanted to make sure, you know, to to tell the audience is that, you know, I've been producing some big films like this film before. I've been producing these type of documentary films for many years. I produced a mm -hmm. film called The Cave that was Oscar nominated in 2020, also an that Geo film. Yes. And what's really important, I think, to to share with the audience is, yes, it's a film in the Amazon and yes, it's about indigenous people, but it is really also a very cinematic experience like the cave happened in Syria and we weren't focusing entirely on the Syrian war we were really focusing on a woman that was working in a hospital underneath ground while the bombs were flying around her ears wow. in a country that was very male dominated patriarchate society and in the same way I feel that the the territory it's yes of course it is about climate change and it is about how important it is that we protect the indigenous people because they protect the land and they protect the forest. And we need the forest in order to, uh, you know, 
not not destroy our planet but but really the film is about people and about characters and their daily lives and the struggles they have and that makes the film enormously relatable uh, it's a young leader he's 21 years old and now and when he starts in the film he's only 18 when he becomes the leader and I think it is important for not only you know, middle-aged people like me, 52 years old, but also that we have, uh, you know, great role models in the young people that our young people can look up to and and see what type of strength they have and how much they fight every day to, to live and to protect the territory they live in and also protect the planet and protect us. Because there is this tendency that young people now are almost having like, a climate depression but I think this film actually offers them a bit of hope that if they will protect the indigenous people the, the indigenous people can protect our land and thereby also protect them so hopefully the film offers like a com community sort of uh, hope for all of us if we start protecting the indigenous people absolutely yes I agree and I saw that you all also offer some kind of follow-up if you want to get involved. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that? So we have a very big impact campaign and we are working very hard to build a media center in this part of the territory, the, the Hondonian territory. And the media center is built together with the community and it actually allows them to continue filming, continue to make films, from their everyday life and the stories they want to tell, but of course also continue to make films about the big conflict that is happening around them all the time. And it also offers them a possibility to develop their skills in filmmaking and start doing you know, more skills with sound, et cetera, that they got totally, of course, inspired by, by being part of this film. And we are also doing a lot of initiatives with um, indigenous, uh, you know, uh, societies and organizations all around the world. And mm -hmm. I think you can come in on our impact campaign website, and I'm sure Felicia can provide you with all the complete written websites, both where you can follow the film, but also where you can go in and follow the impact campaign. And you can also find ways to participate if you feel like you want to participate and, and, it can be small participations like becoming a member of WWF or, you know, it can be small elements like that. But uh, yeah, here is the, the website, theterritoryimpact.org. And there people can go in and get, get to be part of the, the whole impact campaign. I think that's so important, what you were also saying before, that it has to be coming from the people who are living it. It has yeah. to be their story. Because a lot of times we'll hear about it being something over there and we're like, oh, we wish we could help. And it's like, it's like separated. It's far away. It really, their lives and what they're doing impacts our lives. And what's that connecting factor? How do we go from hearing about it and caring to actually taking action? So I really love that you offer ways for people to be allies to this group. I mean, and I was also, this actually, you know, we, we, we spent six months uh, first discussing with the community with them to figure out what would be the best way to move forward with the impact so the impact campaign is actually created by them and then of course we've raised the money and hired the people to run it together with them but really it's done in a very collaborative way like the whole film is made in a very collaborative way and, and I think, you know, impact makes a difference, but it should come from the people that actually need that impact to happen so that it's not something we are predicting on them, but they, it actually initiated is initiated from them. So yes, that's enormously important that the impact campaign you'll go in and watch on the territoryimpact.org is a campaign that is created with our community on how they really want to move forward and how you guys can get involved. And just remember, it's young leaders like Chai, uh, who is our executive producer. She's 25 years old and she is called the Greta Thunberg of Brazil. And she represents the, the indigenous communities and she speaks about climate change and protecting the indigenous communities 
at COP26 and for the EU. And, you know, she does a lot of work with communicating, uh, you know, her community and what they need from us in order to uh, keep living and not being uh, pushed into the cities and the forest being destroyed. So I think you can really go in and see how these young leaders are showing us the way and how we can participate. Yes, that's so perfect. Please know that the invitation for her to come and talk with us is always open if she wants to. And that, yeah, and that is so in line also with the kind of projects that we, the reforestation work we do. It's not about us coming in and fixing what's wrong, rather we talk to the community. So I'm really overjoyed to hear that your perspective is very similar to ours in the way that you work with the community. And um, yeah, no, I'm delighted to be sharing this. I'd love to know if there's an experience or some kind of learning that you personally took from this film that, or something that you would just want the network to understand or know. I mean, that was, of course, you know, the um, it's been filmed over so many years and Alex has been following the community for a lot of years and the land, the land grabbers for, for years. Mm -hmm. And a very big surprise to me when the film, when we started editing the film and Alex was picking out these sentences and quotes and things they were saying that, you know, the indigenous people, we think they live deep into the forest and they know nothing about what's going on in the world. They're so articulated about climate change and about what happens if the Amazon is destroyed, that the whole planet will rise with five degrees and what an effect it will have on young people in America, in Denmark, in Paris, in Holland, you know, it will have an enormous effect on all of us if this land is destroyed. And it is the indigenous community, they know very well, you know, what they're talking about. And so in a way, I was probably hit with my own prejudice that, you know, I should be the one reminding them about how important it was. They know exactly what's going on. And I, so I was also really impressed and, and surprised with how they actually use technology. It's not like we are giving them cameras or we are giving them drones, you know, Bitete, young leader, 18 years old, he has a mobile phone, he got those drones, he got cameras, like he uses technology to actually protect the land. And it doesn't make him less indigenous. It just makes him a very smart indigenous person that he is using the technology to actually protect where he's from. And I think that is a surprise to audiences that when, when we screen the film, people always asking us, so did you introduce the technology to them? Mm -hmm. And we're like, no, they, they're smart young people. I mean, they'll find the technology and they'll find ways to get it. And they know how they can use the technology to protect them. Absolutely, yes, that's perfect. So I hope your audiences, they will, they will definitely get a few surprises, things they have not seen in a film before, told from, from the Amazon and from an indigenous community. Yes, yes. So I understand it's premiering on the 19th of August. And is it just premiering in the United States? Will it be in the UK? Do you have any idea? So in the United States, it's, it's premiering in 100 cities. I have never tried that before, a documentary film. So wow. I'm enormously... <laughs> you know, happy about that. And I just hope people are willing to go to the cinemas because we need you guys to watch it on the big screen with the incredible sound we've made. And I'm sure even you have wonderful screens at home, it might not be the same. Mm -hmm. So of course we would love people to come to the cinema and it's in over, under over, over a hundred cities in the US. And then we're premiering in the UK in the beginning of September in around 50 cinemas. And we are premiering in Brazil, which will be very, very important, of course, because the burning season is now in Brazil. They are burning the Amazon right now. And Bolsonaro is up for election. And I think it is a film that will disturb the waters or at least be an opening for discussion and an opening for debate. Uh, and so it is very important for us to premiere it in Brazil as well. And then we are premiering in more European uh, countries in the cinema over the fall. And we're just so happy that uh, that National Geographic and Picture House has been able to 
really put the film out this far because it needs a dialogue. It needs that you go and watch it together with other people and it really needs a big screen. Yes, this is definitely a conversation starter and I just feel it's gonna be very powerful and impactful and it could hopefully change lives. So we are so hopefully grateful that you- protecting indigenous lives. That's yes. what we should all yes. work on. Exactly, yes. Yeah, we should all somehow take part in protecting the indigenous because they are the guardians of our planet. And, you know, you were, you know, just briefly, I want to mention earlier, you were saying that, you know, sometimes we think they don't know about climate change when really they know how the planet works in ways that we have no clue. We're, we're totally like in the dark. And also was, we not forget that, you know, these old forests, deep, deep forests, they have a lot of the answers to diseases that will hit us. So if we're destroying them, there's a lot of knowledge and ways to, uh, you know, treat these diseases that we are losing. And and there's a lot of animals that also holds a lot of history and a lot of knowledge and a lot of elements on the planet that are important for biodiversity that we're losing. So if we think that we would like to grow some crop, we are not understanding that we're actually also cutting our own lives, and it it will eventually affect people's lives on the planet. The planet will survive. It's the people that won't survive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Well, I thank you so much. I know you're busy. You got to hop on to your next conversation for the premiere. So thank you so much for taking the time. We will be sharing this information with the network, and we really hope that it reaches, it touches a lot of hearts and it a lot of minds. And if you got the two websites, it's the territoryimpact.org. And it's the territory.film where you can read about the film. Perfect. Well, thank you so very much. And again, uh, we'll stay in touch and yes. see how this goes. And yeah, really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, Tara. I'm really happy you wanted to speak with us. And we're really grateful that you're champion our film. That's important. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all.